Namaskar everybody, Vanakam everyone, Om Namah Shivai. We are absolutely thrilled on this Thanksgiving weekend in the United States to have a young guru of ours, Lavanya Aru. She is the Shishya of GP Nalasibam, uh, who is also on the call with us. And she was introduced to us by our very own Swami Vijayananji. Last time we talked about Shaivite scriptures in general. And we talked about this time we're taking the Sevai scriptures bit by bit. So today's briefing is on Tirumurai 1 to 3. In addition to that, what Lavanyaji is doing for us because of the effectiveness of our lectures, we're taking 10 topics which are things which people are uncomfortable in their lives. And she's giving us patigams or little cures, if you will, uh, and uh, that we can listen to five times, seven times, how, as many times as you wish to every day. And if you do that particular uh, malady, which is in your life, we'll see significant improvement. So eventually, once we have it, we'll put that on our YouTube. So we're working on that as a second step. And she will be a faculty at IHU uh, so that we can continue to get the word of Lord Shiva to more and more devotees around the world. My humble pronouns to you, Lavanyaji Namaskara. Floor is all yours. Ivayanamat, Tirchitrambalap, Chitrambalatan, Tirthoran, Sundaran, Natramal Malayani Navalur Kotravan, Nambi Arur and Perna Urgalo Dinal, Tapikum Tivinaidan. Welcome back, everyone. I think few of us, we were here last week as well. So glad to see all the, uh, some of the known faces, I would say. And I would like to uh, thank uh, International Hindu University for arranging this uh, lovely series because I know how hard it is to arrange for series and they are doing it consistently, which I think uh, the Thanksgiving Honestly, you, you deserve it. That was a lovely uh, gesture for giving back to the society. And my sincere pranams to our Guruji as well. And uh, more than anyone, Lord Shiva and my Guru Nambi Arur. Um, I'll directly delve into the topic that is given today. We are going to talk about the youngest Guru who's only three years old. And when he, was, when he was initiated in this path, he was only uh, just three years and that's unbelievable. Uh, last week, we had a small intro about his background and all these. I'll just refresh your memory uh, within a minute and then I'll move on to the new topic because it's almost like one week. And you know, after our hectic work, it's like, who is Thirunyana Sambandar? You know, sometimes we do have this question. Uh, we already saw that when he was three years old, his father took him to the temple. And uh, when his father was doing his prayers, this uh, small little baby started crying and he was fed with milk, just not the normal worldly milk, but jnana. The entire milk uh, was fed by Shiva and Parvati themselves. When his father asked the name of the person who fed the uh, little kid with milk, he started singing his very first padigam, which is Tododa Yesevian which is even today uh, taken as one of the most important padigam for uh, learners, like, uh, like when, when, when we start learning, for example, like me, we start with Torudaya Sevian because that is the very first initiation path into this uh, singing Tirumurai. His spiritual and religious journey honestly ends there. We cannot say starts there, it ends there. Why are we getting into this path of spirituality? Why are we visiting temples? Why are we uh, you know, continuously chanting and doing all these puja is to get onto the renunciation path. He already received it. He receives the holy milk directly from Shiva and Parvati. So his religious journey ends there. But what he's doing is he just transforms himself into a torch to show us light and to show us the path of enlightenment. That is the first step of a leader. A leader is someone who's there to guide 
their disciples, their followers. Just not, you know, once he received all the happiness, all the blissful state, just not retiring in a cave. Rather, he came out and he went through so much of a pain after that only to guide us. If at all we have to say thank you, honestly, instead of saying thank you to Lord Shiva, we need to actually say thanks to our four gurus because they took the form of human. And we all know what is so beautiful about this human being uh, life. Every single day we are running a rat race and every single day we are going through so much of a pain, emotionally, physically, uh, all those are a torture. And imagine just for our sake, the four of them have taken a human form and come down. So if at all, we have to say thank you. Honestly, we have to thank only our four gurus. And the first guru is what uh, we are going through now. He is in our thoughts for the entire evening now, or rather morning for you, for all of you. Now, let's look at the a little bit more details about his uh, Padigam. If you look at a pattern, when you talk about Tirunyana Sambandar's Padigam, there is a beautiful pattern. Majority of his Padigams will follow this particular pattern. The first seven verses, he will always be praising the place, temple, Lord Shiva, and his omnipotence, omnipresence as well, but majority it will be omnipotence. Eighth verse will always be referencing Mount Kailash, the form of ice, form of Shiva rather, in which uh, he will talk about the deeds what, which Ravana did and how the, how the demon was punished. And the ninth verse will always be for Thiruvannamalai, which we are all familiar with right now because of Swamiji's ashram. So it is, uh, a Thiruv it's about Thiruvannamalai to indicate the fire form of Shiva. The 10th verse will always go on to um, giving us some kind of an advice and guiding us to the right path, rather getting on to, uh, you know, following the other cults or other myths. Because those days when he was born, when he, was in, when he came into the society, there was a lot of other religious beliefs and other cults that was being practiced. So his main objective, the main reason for his birth was to break that and bring real happiness and joy for human lives. That was his main objective. So the 10th verse will always be talking about breaking the other cult. 11th song or the 11th verse was always dedicated to, uh, you know, in management. Oh, sorry, I'm a management person. So obviously I tend to go back to the same thing. Old habits die hard, right? What is in for me? So they say as a leader, as a project manager, when you are giving work to your employees, you need to, when you ask them to do something, obviously they know that we are going to get a benefit out of it. So they won't be interested, but you need to always answer from their point of view, as in what is in for me. If you tell them what is in for them, then they will be motivated to do. And that's a simple mindset for any human being. The first question that will come is, why should I read a Padigam? five to 10 minutes, you know, instead I can just watch a movie or listen to a movie song or watch some comedy, something of that sort. Because our human brain will always start thinking about what is in for me. And the 11th verse is always dedicated for this. And in Tamil, we call this as kapu. Kapu means simple translation is protection. By reading this verse, what is the protection that we are going to get? What is the benefit we are going to get? This is what he made it very, very clear in our, in our language. If you have to say, it is like our insurance, but not only for this birth, but it is for birth after birth. How many ever births we are going to take? Don't know, it is only his uh, knowledge, but if at all we do, we do take our birth, this is an insurance. It is going to protect us. But this protection has no fine prints and there is no ifs and buts. So there is, which you see in a typical contractual agreement, there's nothing called as fine prints. Everything is very, very clearly and logically given to us. So that is the reason why we are always talking about the Thirukkadai Kaap, as I said, which is basically taken as a protection for us. And this plays a very important role for us to understand and move towards our uh, next step in our spiritual journey. As I said earlier, verse number eight and verse number nine 
is a very important verse that we need to talk about. Every human being, whether we are already in the path of spirituality or we are just coming into spirituality, whatever it may be, we would have done so many mistakes, knowingly, unknowingly, wantedly, unwantedly. We would have hurted someone. We would have uh, made some sins. We may not know that it was a sin at that point in time, but now when we sit and repent for it, we will start getting into a guilty feeling. We will start into a depression. Now, if you take Thirupad, the, our uh, first three Thirumurai, the best medicine for that is our eighth song, eighth verse. He says, the history goes this way. Ravana is visiting Kailash and when he's flying over the mountain, there is something that is stopping his chariot. So he's looking below and he's seeing Mount Kailash. He feels a bit offended because he has this feeling as I, mine, because he's so powerful. And when someone has a power, obviously this kind of a grudge will come in. And he feels so powerful that when a mountain is stopping him, he felt intimidated. He could not take it. That's a problem with all of us anyways, right? Uh, be it mine, Kaula, Kailash or whatever it is, we feel intimidated. When our daughter or son ta talks to us, even if it is good, we don't want to listen to it because of our ego. That's the same thing that happened. So what Ravana did was he tried to remove Mount Kailash. Can we imagine someone coming into our house and trying to repair our house or trying to damage our house? How much of an anger we will get? Imagine if this is happening to Lord Shiva's house. But that is what Lord Shiva is. He did not get angry. Rather, what he did was he just pressed the mountain to make it more stable with his finger, little finger Samo. And that is documented by our Tiryana Samandar. So he says with a little finger, he just pressed a little bit. Ravana got stuck under the mountain. This is going to give us, let, let's put all the Puranas aside because Puranas are good to listen, have a smile and that's it. But end of the day, as I said earlier, what is in for me as a soul? What is the lesson that I'm going to get? It gives us a confidence that don't worry, whatever sin you have done, whatever problems you have faced, whatever uh, mistakes you have done, knowingly, unknowingly, it doesn't matter. Once you start repenting for that, once you start singing Thirumurai, because Ravana starts singing and that's how he gets away from this sin. It gives us a confidence that don't worry, don't get into a depression. What you need is going to be given to you. You made a mistake once, but don't worry. That was because of your ignorance. And this kind of a feeling as a human being, as of today, what we all need is only that. Just because what I did 10 years back and 20 years back, if I sit and cry now, am I going to get a solution? No, but rather if I go and sit in front of Shiva and say, I'm sorry, I did this, but I did not do it wantedly, but I know it had hurted someone. I don't know how I'm going to rectify this. Please save me from this power. And then you start reading the Padigam when God can uh, forgive Ravana, obviously he can forgive us. Someone who has, you know, damaged his own house and God could forgive him because of a simple song. All he wants is we have to sing. That's it. Now that is one, con that's one confidence that we are getting. Another one is ninth song, ninth verse. Ninth verse is always about Thiruvannamalai. The concept of Thiruvannamalai is it's a fire mountain. Why did he grow as a, uh, as a mountain, uh, as a fire? Because education and money. As of today, what is giving us so much of an ego? What is giving us so much of uh, guts to speak whatever we want to and whatever we want to do or whatever? It is either money or because of education. It's like, I'm a PhD, you know. I'm an IAS officer, you know. You're coming and talking to me like this. I have so much of a wealth, you know, I'm the wealthiest person in this world, you know. So we start arguing on that basis. 11th, uh, sorry, ninth verse gives us the confidence. However wealthy you are, however educated you are, you will never achieve Lord Shiva's feet. Just throw away everything. Go on a submissive manner. Only when you submit yourself, Lord Shiva will show himself. All he's look, looking at us is only love. How much of a pure heart we have, he's not looking at us, our, our money or our knowledge or whatever it is. This is a simple information that we can learn from 
as I said, when you're reading a Padigam, one is, yes, it talks about Lord Shiva, which is very good. We can have a lot of peace of mind. But the second one is, when I read this, what is in for me? You have a lot of information that you can get from uh, Trinyana Sambandar's. He's, he, he's actually trying to give us a confidence. He's the best leader. I would say, uh, you know, you talk about PMP, Prince 2 certifications, whichever it is, without any of these certifications, he's the best leader as of today. Yeah, sorry, as I said, old habits die hard. So when you talk about Trinyana Sambandar's um, Padigams, we can actually see the way how he's approaching the social and ethical norms, what kind of an environmentalist he is, what kind of a traditional norms he's trying to preserve and his leadership, as I said, best leader that you can ever think of. Uh, Siddhanta, uh, he was a revolutionist. That is something that we, we must admire. Seventh century, he has made so many revolutions that even today we are struggling to, honestly, how many of us are having the confidence to walk in the road with our forehead full of ashes, holy ashes? Not many. But in the 7th century, when the entire place was conquered by another religion, another cult, another belief, he was the only one who could wear his Rudraksha. And at the same time, his forehead was full of uh, the holy ashes and he was able to walk on the streets. That kind of a revolution. Today, whatever we are hesitant to do, he did that and he showed us that that is the way how we should live. So we are going to talk about various of his uh, faces. He was wearing multiple hats. We are going to just explore a few of it. Language, as I was mentioning last week, it's of, there's a lot to talk about his language, but I don't think I want to touch on that once again. So since we touched about that last week, I'll just go on to the other areas because we do have a lot, a lot and lot and lot. It, you don't need to repeat it. You see, that's the beauty of Tirijana Samandar. The first area we are going to cover is about the social norms. As a perfect leader, one person must understand the social norm. And what is the social norm that we have to look up for is lead a normal life. That's the most important one, lead a normal life. What do we mean by normal life? I need to study until certain age. I need to get married after a certain age. I need to get kids. I need to make sure that my kids are growing properly. And then I become a grandparent. After that, that's it. And I need to make sure that I'm bringing up my kid as a social uh, responsible citizen, rather. This is the most important work of a normal person. And this is how nature is. If you look at nature, you don't see any elephant or a tiger or a dog or whatever becoming a saint, renunciating the world. Renouncing this world is totally abnormal. That is very important concept in Saivism. Today, if I go and tell some of my family members that I'm following Shiva and I'm a religious person, the first thing they will look at me is, oh yeah, are you renunciating? It's like, please, I don't, I'm not renun renouncing, you know, I'm still in my family life. According to our belief system, don't know from where they got this ideology, but the moment they say, if you start praying, they have a feeling that we are going to renounce this world. To be very frank and very plain over here, 25 years boy, if we go to a pub, the parents are perfectly okay with that. They say, oh, it's because of the age. 25 years boy, if he goes to a temple, the parents start worrying. Unfortunate. And this is what Tirinyana Sambandar is trying to break. He says, be a normal person. You don't need to renounce your life because being in a family life is what our, even our God is like that. That is why almost in 100% of his Padigams, you will always see Arthanari Shurar. Not even one single Padigam, he will sing about only the lady goddess or only the god, male form of it. He will have it. He will have reference to Shiva. But majority of the time, he will say, Ammai Appar. Ammai is mom, Appar is dad. So he will always call them as Ammai Appar. And always Ammai will come front. The reason is, it is through grace. Because when you say Ammai, which is Parvati, we call it as a, in the form, we call it as Parvati. But what, how he represents is the female part is basically the grace. The male part is basically the actual 
the 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 uh, potential energy if we take it kinetic energy and potential energy in science as simple as that even in our simple life if you look at it if you want to get something happening in your house be it you or be it your kids we won't approach our dad how close we may be with our dad you know we won't approach our dad we will go through mom you know why because it's easy to convince the mom dad is more logical he will ask too many questions mom is emotional so it's easy to cheat her i mean cheat her huh? so we go through her and it is easy for her to convince her husband so it's always that way that is how even we pray but none of the places we are talking about shiva separately and parvati separately the simple analogy we can look at it is sun and rays without sun we won't have rays rays doesn't exist without sun if we don't have rays let sun be that there's nothing no use for us so one without the other we cannot split this and one without the other is of no use so this is how we see parvati and shiva as part of saivism we don't worship separately the form of shivlinga itself is in the form of shiva and parvati this is what dhrinyana sambandhar was trying to express he said there is nothing like you know male form or an, a female form even if you look at our physical body left side of our body will always be smaller than a right side left side will be less powerful than our right side that's why when we are talking about doing some physical work very hard work first thing you will do is with your right side because right is more powerful than the left whether we are a male or a female this is how our body is even the internal organs if you look at the lungs if you look at the kidneys and all these left side will be smaller than the right side this is nature nothing is myth over here we are not talking about that's why when i i get angry when someone says hindu mythology i say which which one do you see as a mythology over there nothing is myth 100% science and this is what trinyana sambandhar was trying to explain you know why those days going to temple was a big thing it's like unusual thing so he wanted to break that and he said be a normal person be a normal lead a normal life go to temple visit lord shiva but don't think about it as a statue or whatever think as your father think as your mom that is how he started expressing so when you talk about the social norms the first thing he started addressing was don't talk about renunciation and in one of the place he will beautifully say uh, about you know the other uh, cults which or the religion or the beliefs that was propagating a lot on the renunciation path and becoming a sage and all these he would say that pakiyam indri irudalai pogamum patrum vittar which means poor guys are those those people are really poor souls they don't tend to enjoy they don't have an choice to enjoy this life and they don't enjoy the other life also you know because they are not seeing the benefit of both so saivism is giving you the benefit of both worlds we call it as this life as well as the afterlife so trinyana sambandhars you, you can see his even even when we are talking about the social norms and all these right we can still see uh quite a lot of um, uh, leadership uh, entangled into it another very important social um social norm that we have to discuss which is very important at least at this point in time this juncture is the moment we hear the word death it's a big taboo in many of the culture they take it as very serious you can they can't even hear the word death death is supposed to be a taboo for them but according to saivism no it is reuniting with your dad it is like you know we get married and we are out now we are again going back to our father's place that is how death is seen according to hinduism according to saivism and one instance what happens is he is planning to visit a temple early in the morning he is going to a place called as tirumarugal he is going there and then uh, there was uh, before he enters the temple he is hearing a lady sitting and crying crying out of sorrow and it is very visible you know when we are crying in sorrow it will be a different uh, way right so she is actually crying he hears that according to him he needs to visit temple but before that there is something else that he needs to address even before visiting temple he goes to the other direction to see what is happening and this young girl she says she and her lover uh, basically it's it's like uh, you know they wanted to get married 
and they left their house and they came to this particular place to stay. And they are staying there overnight. That is when the, a snake has bitten him and he dies out of the poison. And this girl beautifully says, the snake touched him, but I'm not able to touch him because I'm not married. I can't even cry. I can't even touch him and then cry because you look at the social norm those days. Nowadays, don't know where to find these kind of culture. But those days, without getting married, they did not touch one another. And she's sitting and crying. And this small little boy, just imagine three, four years little boy. He says, don't worry, everything will be okay. Such a confidence. If we, if we were there in that position, one, we would have avoided that situation and we would have pretended as if we didn't hear that and we would have gone into the temple. Alternatively, alter, alternatively, we'll just say, okay, it's your fate. What to do? Just go and pray. You know, we would have given. But this little boy, he says, everything will be okay. Don't worry. Remember, death is not a taboo according to Saivism. So he sings a very beautiful song. Sadaya yenumal Sarani yenumal Vidaya yenumal Viruva virumal Madayar kuvalai Malarum marugal Udayai tagumo Evil wool melee Eleven songs. After the 11th song, the poison goes nowhere and the boy gets up and the marriage happens. Even today, we are going to record that also for all of you because uh, if there is any hindrance or a roadblock in a marriage, even today, this Padigam is one of the best. I had a lot of personal experience with this Padigam and it really works. It really works. I can tell you with so much of a confidence because I'll, I'll share when the time comes. Yeah, but it's real. It really works. The next one is something we saw, spoke about last week. If you remember, because of the uh, fever uh, during that time. So that is also a very good uh, uh, padigam, which is also based on the social responsibility. Another one is, uh, this is also needed at this point in time because of COVID. Many of us are having a little bit of an issues with, you know, income and this and that. So obviously for food, you know, he sees a place with a, a lot of uh, uh, famine. The place is, th there's no rain. Because of it, there's a lot of famine and he wants to serve the community. Where does he go for food or money or whatever? Obviously, Lord Shiva, right? So he went, he went and uh, uh, he's going and asking his dad, okay, now give me money. I need to serve my people. And this is done in Thiruviri Maralai. There's a beautiful song. It's called as Vasi Tirave Kasunal Gavir. Even today, yeah. Uh, Today morning, if you sit and read this afternoon, somehow or the other, you will get money. This is one of the magic that I used to say, you know, you don't need to worry. By right, you should be reading it 11 times. But no, not even once he had given a chance that I had to complete 11 times. After three to four days, we get the money. After that, we forget. Then the next problem comes in. So, of course, we know it's not right. But yeah, that's the practical approach that we are taking. This is about the social. Let me just move on to the next one, which is more towards the environmentalism. Because right now we are talking about go green, uh, you know, carbon, uh, carbon uh, uh, emissions and uh, more towards like, you know, saving the earth, saving Gaia and all these is becoming one of the uh, hip topic right now. And in seventh century itself, our Trinyana Sambandar has focused on this. He's first having his holy milk in the, uh, in the temple. After that, he sings two Tirupadigams over there. Then the fourth Padigam, he's going to another place next to the next to the, the place Sri, Sri Sirgari. He's going to another place called as Tirkolaka. Immediately, what we will think of is he will go and sing about God. But actually, he's not. He's starting with nature. He's starting with nature. He says, Madail Vale Paya Madarar, which means he's talking about the nature. The entire place is full of paddy fields. And in the paddy fields, there's a lot of fish. Imagine paddy fields having fish. Nowadays, uh, we can't even find fish in the sea. Right? Imagine paddy fields having fish. So which means people were so, the vegetarianism was one of the concept. The next one was they, they were so, uh, having so much of a wealth in terms of the net natural resources. And he says in that place, 
young girls are playfully taking their bath and all these. So the place is full of safety, security, clean, green. In today's language, if we have to say so serene, I'm not sure where to see that place right now, at least only in pictures and fairy tales we are able to see. But those days he's able to picture it just in front of our eyes. First two lines goes to the nature. Second two lines only he's thinking about Shiva, which is to give us a very important lesson. If you damage nature, you are damaging Shiva. You can never get into the path of spirituality when we are damaging nature. Nature is Shiva. Shiva is nature. He sees everything and everyone around him as if you start taking the list of all the flowers that is represented in his padigams. I once started, I came all the way to 1,200, almost 1,200 flowers. After that, I gave up because some of it, I didn't even know that it was a flower name. When I knew it, it's like, Alama, again, I have to start over it. So I just left it. But if you look at it, so, so many trees, so many flowers, so nature. He says, instead of going to a temple and making the temple dirty, protect the nature, Shiva will be there. Shiva is there. So this is the most important concept as a leader he's trying to establish over there. It is not just the stone that we are worshipping. It is everything as a holistic approach. We say, right, holistic approach and an organic approach. That's exactly what Trinyana Samandar is talking about. He sees everything in a holistic manner. But obviously, when you worship, it must be in an organic manner, which is only Lord Shiva. So he talks about this one God worship, but at the same time, he talks about everything around as an entire, it comes as a package. So he sees everything as a package. That is one of the uh, beauty in his, uh, in his uh, uh, padigams. Another one is he's going to a place near uh, Chennai, it is called as, actually it is near to Thiruvannamalai. If you guys visit there, right, you can actually visit this place also. It is called as Thiru Otur. In this particular place, uh, there was this Shaivite and he's growing palm trees. And the palm trees all turns out to be a male palm. And none of, his, none of it is blooming. And everyone is making fun of it and saying that, see, because you're worshipping Lord Shiva, and even today you hear that, I'm not sure if you have it here, in at least in the place that I, I live and all these, we do have that, you know, they say, oh, don't pray to Lord Shiva, you will get into a lot of trouble, he'll make you cry and, you know, he'll give you all sort of hardness and don't know from where they get all these. Honestly, after praying Shiva, I'm much, much better than what I was earlier, honestly. But we get this kind of an information, they say, oh, don't pray. And someone had told him also, see, because you're praying to Lord Shiva, that's why you're getting into this and all this. And then this farmer, he's so, you know, he's, he didn't know what to do. When Trinyana Samandar is coming there, he's going and crying to Trinyana Samandar. One simple padigam he, he sang. And this padigam made everything turn out into a female palm tree and everyone started blooming, even today. Uh, if a girl baby is delaying her uh, first menstruation cycle and all these, if there is a delay because of our uh, food and because of the hormone changes, there's a lot of change in our body also. Whenever there is a delay, usually we ask them to sing this uh, padigam for the girl to become mature. And this is practically happening as of now. So you can see even for these kind of issues, the day-to-day -day issues that we are talking about, you do have uh, padigam. And another beautiful approach in terms of environmental is he goes to a place called Nanipalli. It's a deserted place. It's a desert. And in, in Tamil Nadu, we don't have the concept of desert because we, we don't, our climatic conditions are, because we are near to the, uh, you know, because of the place geographically we are located, we don't have the concept of desert. But whenever we have this farming land which goes dried out because of lack of rain then it will be converted into a desert but we don't talk about like sahara desert or whatever that we have in the world that is not the concept so what he does is he just visits that place and he sees that the place is entirely a desert he sings a padigam and the padigam is a nice padigam it says he's explaining the entire place yeah 
um, if you look at that padigam after the uh, after that padigam right the place turns out to be a full paddy field now if you want to believe this if you believe in shiva yes all these are possible if we don't believe imagine we are not into this path yet how do if someone is asking how do i believe it it's a simple approach if you look at it as of today in chemistry we say that there is a metal when we remove certain components it will change its characteristics what he is doing is a simple chemistry work that's it the padigam because of the words because of the power of the words and the power of the pun the music the pun over there what happens is some of the characteristics some of the atoms are being removed and because of that it is being transformed today we are seeing in chemistry labs we are able to do that right we are changing one chemical to another chemical reaction how is that possible when we mix or when we remove that's exactly what is happening so as i said 100% science we are not talking about magic everything is logic 100% right so that is something because uh, i mean i'm not sure how how much um, uh, you have this kind of an idea for me i i come from this kind of a mindset for me i need proof for me to believe anything i need proof so when when this was given to me i was asking arguing and all these and then i was convinced based on this yes it is possible nowadays we are able to see silver becoming gold gold becoming iron very much possible it's all chemical reactions so changing one land to another land is not a, a not an issue but of course when we believe in shiva everything is possible end of the day that is the most important one but yes we do have answers for those of them who don't believe in shiva also that's what i'm trying to say now that's about the environmental aspects let's move on to the next one i'm just touching some of the aspects only yeah we don't have time to go into the details his traditional norms he was born in a very very traditional vedic family and according to the uh, saivism uh, culture uh, however big saint we are it doesn't matter we have to bow down to the mom's feet mom should not bow down to our feet but dad can bow down to our feet we don't need to bow down to the dad's feet that is one good thing about the mom but the mother motherlyhood so immediately after he was initiated in this path after in the temple he received the holy milk he is coming home the first thing he does is he's uh, bowing down to his mom's feet so he is not he's actually a renounced person at that point in time he's realized person self realized person yet he follows that norm one thing that i really like about his history is he has given us a separate padigam for vibhuti he has given a separate padigam for vibhuti to say what is your problem because today if you look at it if there is a death in a house they don't have they don't uh, wear vibhuti they don't want to if uh, during a periods menstruation cycle ladies should not be wearing vibhuti we have because we have all these kind of don't know from where we got it but we had it but he is actually breaking it he says if you want strength go ahead wear vibhuti if you want beauty instead of going for all these cosmetic surgery and all these have vibhuti that's the best makeup kit that we can ever have so he is going all the way into that he says mantra tantra everything is vibhuti so he is going into such details the vibhuti trip the tripadigam itself is beautiful and he tells us that anyone and everyone can wear vibhuti that is the that is a as long as a soul is longing for it it can be a dog it can be a cat it can be a human it doesn't matter it can have you can have the privilege of having a vibhuti that's one of his you know he's trying to bring in that tradition which is which is very good and um this is an interesting history that we should be knowing about our our trinyana samandar because it shows how matured he is when he was in the age of 15 16 around that prime teenage at that point in time he visits chennai now chennai right so he visits there he goes to mailapur that is the place where the most richest person one person who is very very rich he has a beautiful girl he is growing up the girl with a mindset that he is going to marry the girl off to tirunyana sambandar 
since young age the dad keeps saying oh your husband is trinyana sambandar your husband so he's you know planting that in the girl's mind so the girl is growing up with that intention itself and one unfortunate day a snake bites that girl and the girl dies off this is all happening before trinyana sambandar trinyana sambandar's visit the girl dies off what the dad does is cremates the body put all the ash and bones in a pot and keeps it near the temple even today you can go and visit the temple you can see the lady statue over there even today it is there in mailapur you do have that it's called as pumbavai so trinyana sambandar is coming once the 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 chettiyar knows that he is coming what he does is all the way from mailapur to the place that he is it's almost like 45 kilometers to 47 kilometers he is making a path with flowers those days are huh? imagine how expensive it is going to be he's super rich so he is making a beautiful pathway out of flowers for the kid to walk and he comes in he comes to mailapur and then the dad says you see i grew up this girl for you now she is in ashes now you are her husband that's how we grew her now i'm handing over the ash to her uh, to you and he thinks the padigam beautiful padigam he thinks the padigam immediately after he keeps the pot and then he sings the padigam after the padigam is sung the pot breaks and a beautiful young girl is in front of him beautiful in the 12th tirumurai uh, sekular padiga periya puranam not even in one place he is appreciating the beauty of a lady except this place he tells how beautiful the girl is in front of him imagine tirunyana sambandar is in his teen age he seeing the girl and she was grown with an intention that he is going to be the husband so which means he has all rights to marry her the dad is over there and the dad says the dad is so happy now he says i grew her for your sake now i want you to marry her and you know what is the maturity of tirunyana sambandar unbelievable he just says your daughter is dead long back now what i have here is my daughter because of lord shiva's grace imagine a 16 year old boy looking at the best beautiful girl possible and saying she is my daughter that is our culture that is our tradition so is up upholding the tradition over there not even one single place we can point at tirunyana sambandar and say he made a mistake at this place none that's why we said that's the best leadership possible that you can see and this is even today all these are history it is documented even today if you visit the uh, mailapur you can see the place you can actually every time i visit there i sit and sing that padigam in front of the lady and then only i go and visit the the the, the Sh- lord shiva itself it's so beautiful it's so energetic over there it's such a nice place to visit honestly yeah now obviously talking about his leadership quality we have been touching on his leadership quality in an indirect manner now directly his one incident is good enough for us to talk about his leadership one which is his madurai incident when he visits madurai of course there's a lot more but one place that is very significant in his history is he goes on the three set of arguments the three set of arguments are it is called as suravadam which is on fever the second one is anulvadam which is on fire third one is punalvadam which is on water if you look at it all the three we call it as bhutas right the panja bhutas out of the panja bhutas there are three which is visible the other two is intangible in nature if you look at space if you look at air it is intangible in nature and the guys who are arguing with trinyana sambandar they have a concept that they don't accept space according to their belief they don't accept space and imagine we are spending millions of dollars sending our people to space ha huh? but those guys simply negate the idea of space so they don't want to talk about the intangible ones they only spoke about the tangible ones fever is on the body which is made of earth the second one is water the third one is fire 
he went ahead and he broke all those arguments and he won the arguments how did how was it possible basically he writes on a palm leaf both both the parties they have to write in a palm leaf whatever they believe and they need to put it in a fire and the fire should not burn it bear got such thing right whatever we put, the, the beauty of fire is anything and everything can be swallowed look at the arguments they said tirunyana sambandhar has to first put uh, put his palm leaf into the fire they didn't want to put first so they said you put first tirunyana sambandhar was very very clear earth fire water air space everything is lord shiva when i'm giving it to lord shiva itself how is it going to damage so he invoked the fire element of shiva when he was putting the palm leaf into the fire the palm leaf just stayed green ever green that is the way because if you look at it the way how we believe the way how we see lord shiva is the most important one and that is what he was trying to establish the next one he's dropping a a palm leaf in the water in a in a river and the river it's going against the current the palm leaf went against the current that is unbelievable as of today we only know salmon fish is able to do that it can go against the current none of the other fishes can do that it can go against the current and climb up the mountain but trinyana sambandhar's palm leaf was also able to do that so if you look at it it's all the way how he had established saivism once again in a place where saivism was almost dead long lost he went there and he established that shows what level of belief system that he wanted us to have on lord shiva that's why i used to say even if we don't believe in lord shiva it's perfectly okay believe in his padikams everything will be done one classic example is meikandar was born only by reading his padikam one uh, parents they did not have kids and according to their jat- jatak they don't have a uh, prap for any kids they don't have so according to their stars signs and all these they cannot have a kid and what they are doing is uh, they are going to their guru who is umapati uh, i mean um, uh, uh, he's called as uh, arul nandi sivam he is going to the the his guru his pa- parents guru and asking for a solution his guru was very smart what he did was he took tirunyana sambandhar's padikam he put a rope in between he opened up and he gave a song it's called as pe adaya piriveidum pullayinodu which is to say don't worry even if you are uh, having a ghost that is conquering you it will go away and you will have kids the exact statement says that he said okay go to that particular place read this padikam 45 days you will get a kid the parents are going there and they are taking bath in the three uh, wells and then they are chanting this mantra every day which is chanting this patikam every day and uh, lord shiva comes in the dream and uh, he says do you know that according to your jatak you don't have kids the dad was so confident he says yes i know i don't care if you are going to give but i know tirunyana sambandhar will give lord shiva did not have an option but he gave the baby so if you look at it he was our first guru in siddhantam he is called as meikandar meikandar got his uh, knowledge in 2 years reading a 3 years baby's uh, verses this kid got a knowledge in when he was when he was 2 years so his padigam will do wonders and that is what we are also following as of today for me whatever happens it is tirupadigam for me everything is tirupadigam any problem i just go to uh, you know just just look at one of the padigam just uh, place a rope whatever padigam comes to me i'll just start reading until it gets sorted out whatever type of a problem it can be sorted out that is the power as i used to say it's okay even if we don't believe on shiva it's okay <laughs> but tirupadigams are so powerful because it is all given directly from lord shiva that is the reason yeah so that is one of the uh, area we need to know and of course when you talk about uh, siddhantam and because if you talk about trinyana sambandhar without talking about siddhantam nothing can come in place so obviously he talks a lot about siddhantam there is only one verse that i can give as an example 
விளையாதது பரிசில் வரு பசு பாச வேதனையும் தலையாயின தவிர வருள் தலைவன் அது சார்வாம் விச் இஸ் சிம்பிள் வே டு டாக் அபவுட் the three elements that saiva siddhantam is based on pasu pasu padi pasu so beautifully he, and also he gives us a padigam on the five letter syllable the five syllable mantra which is sivaya namah he gives a beautiful clarity even today we take that as our path of initiation to you know move on in this path we do, even if we don't get a guru sometimes we get into that situation you know we are somewhere stationed outside of india we don't know where to ask for help we don't know where to look up for help but we know that shiva is everything where we where do we go how do we approach very simple just take this padigam read it the guru will be automatically sent to us that is what because for us guru is lord shiva lord shiva is the one who is sending us the gurus according to our knowledge according to our maturity so the padigams are actually guiding us towards that path that is how we are looking at so whatever it is it is very very important for us to start believing and start chanting the padigams lord shiva's grace will 100% be on us not even to doubt anything about it okay with that i conclude um my heart heartfelt thanks to all of you i know it is quite early yet you guys managed to join in and i really thank you for that my first disclaimer i have to say is i'm not an english literature trained person i'm trying to pick up the language in a slow and steady manner in case i'm not using a correct vocabulary pardon me for my ignorance i'm sure i'm getting my thoughts across uh, even by the way of beating around the bush uh, because some of the words are which i'm not aware of but i'm still trying to learn i'm sure lord shiva will will bless me with that one day once again i would like to thank uh, international hindu university for giving us this opportunity uh, to talk about our first uh, guru trinyana sambandhar and i also want to take this opportunity to thank our swami ji for opening up this doors and uh, obviously lord shiva and my guru nambi arura because without them i don't think all these are possible so yeah because of his grace took me into this path i would say thank you so much What a beautiful, beautiful, absolutely beautiful talk. Thank you so much, Lavanya Ji, for what you have presented to us today and inspired us with all these patikams, which are very practical solutions to common things in our life. Any questions from anybody? Uh, anybody has any questions? I, I have a question. And of course, thank you so much. And you conveyed it very, very well. So there was no need to say... to excuse you for the english i mean you have perfect english it came very very fluently and i think you all of us understood it so my question is related to mahamrityunjay mantra so you talked about the the all the padakams so how does it relate with the mahamrityunjay mantra because that is also supposed to save you with, with the grace of lord shiva isn't it Yes, we don't differentiate Sanskrit and Tamil verses. We try not to differentiate those two. But it's only the comfort. If we are comfortable in chanting Mrityuja Mantra, that will be a better option. But some of us, when we don't understand properly and when we are not able to pronounce it properly, it might give us a negative effect. So in those cases, we can, because Tamilians, most of the time, the pronunciation of Sha, Ha and all these may be a little bit challenging. So we suggest the Tamil Padigams. But both... both are given by lord shiva as in tamil as well as sanskrit so we are perfectly okay both are having the equal weightage yes uh, very nice very nice also lavani ji you said do we say namo shivaya om namo shivaya or do we say om shivaya namo which is the right way of uh, which is the right pranakshi uh to start with according to saiva siddhanta they say when you start with namasivaya that is the first stage of mantra but that will give us only worldly pleasures because na and ma stands for the worldly pleasures ya is the soul va means grace si means shiva so when you look at when we look at this if we say nama in the starting what happens is we are still getting ourselves attached to the worldly pleasures 
But whatever we need for this life, this particular life to lead our life in a peaceful manner, we will achieve all that. But if we are looking at enhancing in our spiritual path, we need to change it. We need to say, Siva Yanama. Beautiful. That is how it is. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Lavanya. Yeah. Any other questions? Raj, yeah. Raji, anything from you? Om Shivaya Nama Lavanya Ji. It's yeah. uh, beautifully explained well, as uh, Sri Gupta Ji said, you know, uh, your English is uh, perfect. You know, all the things you wanted to convey, it came across uh, very beautifully with the grace of Lord Shiva. Thank uh, you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Did not, nothing I, I wish most of us could express like you do such difficult concepts and bring it into our very practical way for it to get into our brains. Uh, I wish other. I don't have that ability. Most of us don't have the ability to convey. If we, yeah. say we, if we say we are bringing this to the next generation, to the kids, if it is not scientific, I don't think it's going to be practically possible. Yeah. Exactly. Myths and beliefs just stay with us. Yeah. But if we want to bring it to the next generation, we need to tell them practically what is the benefit that they are going to get, how scientifically it is aligned, only then we can reach that. So True. the first aim is to bring it to the next generation, which means we need to justify all these in a logical manner that they are able to buy in. So... Uh... Shiva Lavanya ji, I have a question for you. Uh, being a Tamilian, uh, I learned uh, in school Tamil, but uh, my uh, Tamil knowledge is not uh, very well to understand the poetry form. You know, I can read the Saiva Siddhantam very well if it is in a prose form, uh, so I can easily understand and uh, uh, get the concepts very clearly, but uh, most of our ancient uh, uh, gurus, you know, those sixth, seventh centuries, the form is, you know, like a poetry form. So that uh, I, I have very difficult time to really understand the poetical form, you know, being not having that uh, a deep understanding of uh, Tamil language, you know, uh, uh, what will be the best way? You know, I have uh, past five years uh, learned the Saiva Siddhantam, but I really want to learn the Thirumurai properly. Uh, just, you know, like uh, by learning the Saiva Siddhantam, a lot of examples were given and also uh, the, the meanings were given. Uh, so I, I can understand well, but to, to enjoy the, uh, the, the uh, a poetical form, do you have any recommendation how, uh, where should I start? Because even, you know, the, the padihams, if the words are clustered, to separate the words to understand the meaning is a little hard for me. I think that is one of the challenge most of us are having right now. And I would say that the only thing that helped me is Nambi Arora. What, I, what happened was I wanted a, a guru and uh, to learn all these. So when I was searching for it, it was some way that someone told me that gurus are only these four of us. Yes. So four of them. So what, uh, what I did was I just uh, you know wrote a chit in front of God and I said, give me one guru. Yeah. And they gave me Nambi Arora, which is the seventh Thirumurai, right? So he was given... I took his book. That was the first thing that I did. I just read, kept on reading his book. Trust me, I was literally crying. I could not understand a word. I could not even read it properly. Like what you said, right? When it is in a clustered form, I was not even able to split it in a logical manner. I was literally crying. But only thing is, when I, when I called my mom and I said, I don't understand anything. My mom said only one word. That was actually a very insp inspirational word. She said, your Shiva has, you believe that your Shiva has the ability, right? Yeah. Read it with confidence. He will make it, uh, make it clear for you. And it happened. Don't know how it happened, but it happened. That is how I would say, don't leave hope. Don't leave your, lose your heart. Read one, just take one Thirumurai. Just identify which one is closer to you. Go to, go near to your altar. Ask Shivapiraman itself, who is going to be your guru? Pick up one Thirumurai, maybe seven Thirumurais or eight Thirumurais, write it in a chit and put it in front of the God. 
ask a kid to pick it up or even you can pick it up read only that until they give you do, what shiva is looking at is how much we are able to dedicate ourselves that's what he looks at so don't lose heart read it i'm sure he will i'm able to read it if i can do uh, it you can do it honestly oh my gosh <laughs> Yes. Oh, we're going to have another one, Raji, by uh, uh, Lavanya Ji. We'll do one on 7th Tirumurai, which is her guru. That's where our initial conversation was. So we'll have Lavanya Ji come, if she can, uh, on, a, on a monthly basis and, and continue to educate us, right? Because I think uh, her way of teaching us is very practical way of, of uh, communicating ideas to us. So... This is absolutely a blessing, and she's happy to do it for us. So we'll uh, we'll leverage her um, her desire to spread uh, shifts and tantra to all of us. Yeah, Miss uh, Lavanya Ji, you are very inspirational for very. us. Thank you, Om Shivaya. Thank you, Om Om Shivaya Nama. You are. <laughs> <laughs> See, you so you're much. teaching us all. Thank you so much. And have a wonderful week. And you and I will connect a little bit more on the phone next week. Thanks, Beautiful. Beautiful. Lavanya, you have a wonderful night. Thank you again. Thank you very, Thank very you. much. And I'll have send you this day. recording so we can. Thank you. Too. Thank you very much. It's a very, very interesting. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Uh, next week, guys, we have Raghu Vansham. Kalikas' Raghu Vansham is the topic for next week. So uh, uh, we will uh, we alternate between uh, between uh, different uh, different ways of thought to keep everything going within our Hinduism. So that's that's the topic for next week. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day or a great evening. Good night. Bye bye. Have a good day. good bye. weekend as well. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you later. No.